Hello, uh, welcome back. Um, I've got in front of me here a little mix by a band called the Louis Cressy Band. Um, it's a bit of a funky rock number. Um, and I wanted to kind of follow on from what I talked to you about with the gain stage in the last time and talk to you this time about my master bus effects. I compressors, EQs, etc and how I kind of work with that because I like to do a kind of a uh, top down mixing technique so I've set this mix up um, I've gone as far as putting in all my um, trim plugins which in this case as I don't own uh, Satson I use Britson um, because that's the one that I do on. So it's the channel that's here. So I've gone through and I've um, adjusted all of these tracks as far as I needed them to be. Um, just as a little word about last week, um, on the Britson here, I can set what my zero VU means what that reads and I've got it set on the channels to read minus 18 dvfs so what that means is when that the needle here is hitting zero on here it's giving me the minus 18 db that maybe clears up a couple of questions that I got last week I'm sorry if I confused things a little bit so yeah so I've done the initial set the gain on the tracks I've done a kind of little bit of a a volume mix. I haven't added any return effects on here yet, anything. In fact, I haven't even gone so far as cut the silence out of all the tracks yet. I'm just kind of setting myself up uh, to get ready to mix. Um, but I'm going to jump ahead a couple of steps just to do this video today while I've got a little bit of time um, and talk to you about my master bus compression and EQ that I use. Um, I call it master bus compression EQ, but I don't actually use a master bus on these occasions. What I do is all of my individual instruments are sent to their individual buses. I know there's some of you screaming at me, why don't you use envelope tracks? I don't use envelope tracks because I like to do a little bit of um, analog summing. So I send some of these buses out. Um, to a, a little mixing desk that I've got here, an old analog mixing desk, and then route them back through there. Um, I find it very difficult to do with the envelope tracks. It's I'm sure there's a way of doing it. I just haven't figured it out yet. I may be getting a bit long in the tooth, but anyway, um, I, this is just the way I find it the easiest to do it. So I do use envelope tracks if I'm not using analog summon, but on this occasion I will be. Um, so all of those go into their individual buses and then those buses end up at this submix and on this submix this is where I'll put my effects my master bus effects effectively um, reason being when I'm using reference tracks the reference tracks I can send straight out via my master and I don't have to worry about switching off compressors and EQs etc when I'm listening I can just press the solo button and listen to the reference tracks so that's my main reason for it my master bus effects. Um, I'm going on this uh, track here and I'm trying to show you either free or very affordable plugins. I've got three compressors on here at the moment. Uh, the rear comp we all know and love. This MSI which I only got yesterday um, just to try it out. This is a freebie. Um, I'm kind of liking what it does. I think it'll have to be in certain situations, but I'm liking what it does sometimes. This uh, one from SK Note, which I, I bought yesterday as well, and trying it out for the first time. So I'm not very, really familiar with it yet, but I'm liking how it's sounding so far. Then we've got Re-EQ, 
I'll explain this in a little bit. And I've got this Sony EQ, which is a, a free EQ from uh, Sonymus. Um, I picked this up the same time when I bought the, the Britson. And I've got Loud Max at the end, which is a free limiter. Just, I'm not using any, I'm not pulling anything down on it. I'm just using it as a safety measure. And obviously, if I want to have a listen to how the track will make sound when it's going through a mastering limiter, I can just pull it down a little bit and have a listen to see what's going on. But I thought we'd kind of have a look at these three different compressors and kind of go through how I think about using a master bus compressor. But I mean, there's three different flavors going on here. And then I'll explain my EQs. First of all, though, I want to talk about this React. X comp. I've got this set up in a way that I saw Graham from the Recording Revolution talking about how he uses uh, the Dynamics plugin from uh, Ozone and he got a tip from another engineer. And I've set this up in pretty much exactly the same way. Um, the first and fourth band aren't doing anything. Well, they shouldn't be. Okay. And then the second and the third band, well, if I show you so you can see the top frequency here was 100 and about 190 to 200 hertz on frequency one is your top frequency here uh, to about 2.4 top frequency of two and 10 and a half, 10.4 as your top frequency of three. Number four is not doing anything as well. So I've set both of two and three to have a ratio of two to one and set the makeup gain to one and a half dB. The reason being is when you're playing your track, I pull these down so that I'm getting about three dB max uh, on the, the peaks. So you set the recovery for one and a half dB and that kind of averages out what is actually getting compressed. So the only if you set this up with the the frequencies, bands, etc. for ahead of time with the two to one, and then all you've got to adjust is your threshold until you're getting the two or three dB reduction. And obviously as you're mixing the track, keep going back to it, as you have to do with your master bus compressor and check what's going on and adjust as you need to. So if I just play the track without that on, um, I'll get rid of my ugly mug and uh, we'll listen to the track and then I'll go through some of the plugins and what we're doing with them. And I'll bring in XCOM. If I take it out again. Friends of mine down in Hollywood. Now I hope you can hear how it just tightens up the middle, tightens up the bass. Even Graham from the Recording Revolution isn't doesn't understand how this works, but it just does. I mean it just tightens up that the mid and the bass and brings the vocals forward a little bit in the mix. It just polishes it a little bit. It just works, what can I say? So, I mean, I've just copied the settings. He used uh, Ozone, but I've just copied the settings into here. And as far as I can tell, it sounds just as good with XComp as it did with Ozone. So that's the first thing. I put this in all my mixes. I do exactly the same thing with it. You know, if I don't need it, if it's not making any difference, I'll take it out. But sometimes, like with this one, it really does make a difference and really tightens things up. So the next in the, the line is rear comp. Um, now with all the compressors, if I'm using them as a, a, a bus compressor on a master bus, I'll just like to get 2 or 3 dB of gain reduction, you know, a couple of dB, just tickling the needle as they, they call it. So if we play this again and we'll bring it in and see, just see what this does. <laughs> Hanging out with 
some friends of mine down. It's subtle, but I really feel it just tightens things up, brings things into focus. You know, it just helps gel it a little bit. I mean, you could push it a little bit more. Let's try. Well, you can see I'm only getting max 2 dB at the moment. You can hear the snare starting to go away there now. When I've got... I was hanging out with some friends of mine down in high... Probably about 30 millisecond attack just to let the, the transients of the drums come through but a fairly fast release and if you listen to the snare I'll turn this off you hear it kind of really come in your face down in Hollywood It'll disappear a little bit when I switch it off. You hear it going to the background there? Turn it on. How it really comes forward as, as everything gels. So that's rear comp. Um, as you hear with this one, this is a totally different flavour. So if we just play it with this in, I'll put it in straight in. This is barely moving that you don't want this one. It's much more aggressive. Really in your face. Some friends of mine down in Hollywood. Just wasting time. Again, if you listen to the snare when I bring it in. Nobody could get me down. Take out on the town. We're gonna have a good time. This one's just so right. We've really got to be We're careful with it. Time. Just tickle the needle. I didn't think it could get much better than this. I didn't Charlie say. So yeah, just a, another different flavour there. Now this is the one that I bought with the plan to use this as my permanent um, bus um, compressor. I mean, as you can see, it's based on the, the Shadows Hills design roughly, and then I think they've taken it their own way from there. But we've got an opto compressor first, which I'm not using at the moment. I, well, I've heard opto compressors aren't the best on the master bus, but I've heard this one works really well. But I, I want to try and learn how to use it a little bit more. So we're going to stick with the, the discrete at the moment and just see that it's in. I've got no side chain on. The optical's switched out. Um, again, I'm just tickling that needle. This needle here is for the discrete section and this is for the optical. Switch it out. Some friends of mine down in Hollywood. That snare really time. comes forward. We've got the choice of different um, transformers down here down. as well. So we'll switch them. The iron's myself. supposed to be the cleanest. Out on the town. We're gonna have a good time. With the nickel and the steel. We're gonna have a good time. Give them a bit more character. I didn't think it could get much better than this. I didn't Charlie say. I really like the sound of the steel on this one. Play. So I went inside. That's when I saw her face. But yeah, I mean that's I think gonna be my fairly go-to bus compressor. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about the EQs. Um, I'm using re EQ first and around the 680 roughly I'm just taking out a couple of dB just to to clean things up a little bit just to clean out a little bit of mud in the mid so if we just have a listen to that I'll bring it I'll listen to it with it in and then I'll take it out it's a little bit more obvious <laughs> It's 
almost as though the high frequencies will get lifted. If you just listen, I'll take it out again. I was hanging out with some friends of mine down in Hollywood. I'll bring it in. Just wasting time. It's subtle, but it just cleans things up a little bit. Then I've got the free EQ from Sonomous. I've used this one as my boost EQ because it just gives a, it's got a nice character to it. I've put a little bit of drive in here to give it a little bit of analog saturation. Um, so I've got a high shelf going on at 8K. Um, I usually switch between 8 or 12, depends what works. 8 seems to work best with this track. And then I've just kicked this up to 4K and given it a little bit of a boost. The only downside with this plugin is I can't actually tell by how many dB I'm raising it. So what we've got 12, 4 or 5 dB, it's a guess. That's the only downside with this plugin. There's no kind of way of telling. But I've got a high Q on the, the mid frequency and I'm not doing anything to the to the bottom end. So if we play this with rear Q in and I'll bring this in. Come in now. Fairly obvious. Take both of them out now. I was hanging out with some friends of mine down in Hollywood. Just wasting time. I knew right there. Now don't forget I haven't actually started mixing this track yet. I haven't got any plugins other than my trim plugins on any of the channels yet. I've done a basic fader mix. And that's it. I mean, the, the levels aren't even right yet. But if we have a listen, and I'll switch the effects in and out, and you'll see the difference that he's making. And it, it kind of gives you a nice, well, for me, it gives me a nice kickstart to the mix and gives me a, a nice starting point. <laughs> That's it, folks. I mean, this is all personal taste. There'll be people screaming at me saying, oh, no, you can't do anything on the master bus. That's OK. I mean, I, I this is how I do it. However, I don't set these and leave them. I mean, I'll go through... I mean, in all honesty, I think these are probably a little bit too much. I'd probably have them around here somewhere. A bit more like it. And as the mix goes on, this may even get switched off. Who knows? But to give me a, a, a nice starting point, and if I, it means that I use less processing on the actual tracks along the way and just concentrate by having one track with processing on it and the others with less, I'll be it. All to the better. It means I can leave the individual sounds alone more if they were well enough recorded. Why mess with them? So that's it for this time, and I'll hope to see you again. Thanks, but uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, tell me you like it, tell me you don't, you know what I'm talking about. See you next time, folks. Bye now.